Today I want to talk about retreating blade stall, not to be confused with retreating brain stall, which is what a lot of students get when they're trying to study and learn all this information. So retreating blade stall happens in the rotor system of the helicopter. Retre retreating brain stall is what happens when people get confused trying to learn all this stuff. I'm Kenny Keller, the creator of Helicopter Online Ground School, and that's why we created Helicopter Online Ground School, is to help people with the retreating brain stall. So I wanna hit some of the things that you're gonna to have to know minimum, even for the private pilot level. You know, at the commercial level and CFI level, maybe you'll be up there drawing things on a board and diving more into this. At the private level, you need to know what it is, what are you gonna notice when it happens, and how you're gonna get out of it. So first you need a definition for retreating blade stall. And a simple definition is, when the retreating blade exceeds the critical angle of attack, which is approximately 15 degrees. Something else important to know, the critical angle of attack and retreating blade stall is a limiting factor for the forward speed of a helicopter. One reason is structural and the other reason is what we call v &E or never exceed speed. So you have to know that if you exceed the v &E, you can get into retreating blade stall. What you need to know what's going on in the rotor system, as the helicopter starts traveling faster, the airflow of over the advancing blade speeds up. The airflow slows down over the retreating blade as the forward airspeed of the helicopter increases. So the advancing blade's moving into the wind, retreating blade is moving away from the wind. So you're getting more lift on one side, less lift on the other. The retreating blade angle of attack must be increased to help equalize the lift. So we know if we go past V&E, we can get into retreating blade stall, but there's some other factors that lower that V&E. And the first two are high gross weight, and high density altitude. Those are always two factors when you're talking about a problem with a helicopter, is high gross weight and high density altitude. Then there's three more that also contribute to the retreating blade stall. One of them is low RPM, the other is steeper abrupt turns, and then there's also turbulent air. You have to understand those five things that they contribute to the retreating blade stall. So you have V&E, and then these other five factors lower that V&E, and it can cause you to get into retreating blade stall at a slower speed than V and E. Next, you're gonna to have to know what happens at the onset of retreating blade stall. Three things are gonna happen and you have to commit these to memory. The first one is you're gonna have abnormal vibrations. After the abnormal vibrations, you're gonna have a pitch up of the nose due to gyroscopic precession. And then after that pitch up of the nose, you're gonna have a roll to the retreating side. Depends on what aircraft you're flying, whether it's counterclockwise or clockwise, the aircraft is gonna to roll to the retreating side. Next, you have to know the corrective measures for retreating blade stall. You get into it, you're aware of the conditions where it can happen, you feel it, you notice it start to happen, you need to be able to reduce collective pitch, the first thing, because you're gonna decrease the angle of the attack and start helping that problem that you're getting yourself into. Next is increase RPM. If your RPM is a little bit low, if the RPM is low, you're gonna to have to get back up into the green range, reduce forward airspeed, and then minimize maneuvering. So basically what they're saying is slow down, lower the collective, check your RPM, don't do anything rash, and you will get out of the retreating plate stall. So those are the minimum things you're gonna to need to know at the private pilot level. Knowing even more is even better, but they're gonna expect you to know. How do you get into it? What do you do? Or what are you gonna notice when you get into it? And then what are you gonna to do to get yourself out of it? So these are the types of things that we go through in Helicopter Online Ground School with audio and visual cues to help you learn the information and help you get through the dreaded check ride. So if you're working on helicopter rating and you need help with the ground school, go to the link below, beside, or above this video. There's a link somewhere nearby or on the face of the video. Click that link and you can find out some more information about our Helicopter Online Ground School and how we can help you. So please give us a like and a share. Leave your comments down below. Click that link beside the video to find out more information about our online ground school and we'll see you in the next video.